Welcome back to Trading 360. I'm Nicole Petalides, live on the floor of the New York Stock Exchange. It's time for our spotlight, OS Therapies. The latest trial results are out. It's treating bone cancer, but this company has a slew of things to talk about in the world of uh, medicine and cancer and solid tumors. And joining me right now, Paul Romness is with me, CEO, OS Therapies, and um, the IPO nine weeks ago. But today is your bell ringing ceremony. Yeah. Glad you're here. Um, you know, this is a company you started some time ago, coming public now. Why? Actually, just chatting about our kids. Uh, my daughter's best friend was diagnosed with osteosarcoma in 2017. I always tell the end of the story because I want to take away the suspense. She's doing great. Yeah. Uh, she's on our board of directors, but unfortunately about half the kids pass away. And we have seven nonprofits who have invested in the company as well. It's amazing. As you, I, We're going to go through a lot of the things that you're working on here, but as you come public, you come with so much experience, too. You've been in the biopharma industry for a few decades, a couple of decades yeah. at least, um, and so you saw the need. It's Breast Cancer Awareness Month. That's a big one here. I saw $35 billion, solid tumors, $211 billion, and osteosarcoma, something that we were talking about here. Um, we, we talked about some recent work that um, has gotten some approval, and that's on bone cancer. So where should we start? How about on the most recent news? Sure. So in the last nine weeks since we IPO, yeah. uh, we finished up our phase 2B clinical trial. Uh, we believe it to be a registration trial, so we'll take that data to the FDA by the end of this year, hopefully with approval mid next year. Uh, we've put out press releases. The data looks good in an otherwise disease that has had no new treatments in over 40 years. Uh, we believe it to be a registration trial. And then we're now pivoting to other solid tumors. In particular, we're looking to commercialize canine osteosarcoma treatment. Uh, dogs, it, osteosarcoma is the number one disease killer of dogs, after obviously after automobiles. Uh, but then we're also looking to do a phase three huh. clinical trial in breast cancer. Breast cancer still uh, is a huge killer. Uh, at least 40,000 people a year get die of uh, breast cancer, and so we think that we can help the standard of care at, with yeah. that as well. And um, and also um, ovarian cancer. You've ovarian, been on that colorectal too, right? cancer. You know, we really started this company around unmet medical need. Yeah. But it also turns out to be a pretty good business model because we could get through the FDA a little faster with a rare pediatric disease. We have that designation from the FDA. If we get approval, we get the priority review voucher that is to encourage companies like ours to do research in kids, cancers, and rare diseases. But we also can pivot to the larger cancers uh, and help those cancers as well. Yeah. Um, I can't imagine the amount of money it takes for research and development to put these uh, trials together. At the same time, I mean, you could have wonderful news here. You're doing this phase two um, B for, for what we were just talking about, for bone cancer. And if you get approval mid next year, I mean, that could really be huge. In the meantime, EF Hutton put a buy rating on OS Therapies, maintained a $21 price target, which they put out on the 16th of September. Um, but also now sort of reiterating that. And the stock's at three bucks. You know, there's a lot of hope here, isn't there? Well, and we have a lot of milestones coming. You know, we're looking to outlicense the canine osteosarcoma. We're at least looking to commercialize the human osteosarcoma and outlicense the XUS while we commercialize it here in the US ourselves. Mm -hmm. And then we have uh, a priority review voucher uh, with approval. We also have an incredible technology in antibody drug conjugates, ADCs. They're the yeah. big deals in biotech the last 18 to 24 months, anywhere right. from 400 million to 53 billion. And our little special sauce with our ADC, and I describe an ADC as a cruise missile with cluster bombs on it. It's a micro delivery system. Huh. Our yeah. special sauce and our IP is that we wrap those payloads, multiple payloads, and connect them to the ADCs with silicone. The beauty of silicon, as you know, in industrial use, is it's not degraded by protein or water or anything else. It's right. broken down by pH. It turns out cancer is, has a lower pH, a higher acidity. We can dial in that pH level to drop those payloads mm -hmm. and then let them go active in the cancer environment. Instead of being active as they're traveling through your body, 
damaging parts of your body before they right. get to the cancer. And people really haven't heard as much, because this is fairly new right. um, in battling cancer, antibody drug conjugate. It's not something we've said a lot over right. the last couple of decades. Yeah. I mean, it's on the newer side of things. Um, it but, is, and yeah, it ahead. will be in 10 years where monoclonal antibodies are now. It will replace, as the yeah. CEO of AbbVie said, it will replace chemotherapy as we know it, because chemotherapy is so toxic. Right, and I know you're, you're working with immunotherapy as well. Um, chemotherapy, very toxic. In the meantime, are you working with other companies? Do you have to, are you in conjunction with some of, you mentioned AbbV, um, are you working with other big CEOs and companies? Well, you'd mentioned I've been in the industry a long time. Yes. I, I often say there's only one good thing about getting older, Nicole, and that is seeing your friends do well. Yeah. So uh, all of our friends are now leaders in the industry, and I hope we can have some conversations. We've had some conversations with some of our friends in the industry, and we are looking to partner with them. We have some incredible technology, as they say, bio and big pharma yeah. come to you if they have a real problem. and. ADCs have a real problem right now where their linkers are breaking off. So partner, not takeover. You never know. I mean, this could be, I mean, Big Pharma could, could look at this and say, this might be something that they could uh, work with going forward. Um, I, I'm sure we're you're probably, not setting it up yeah, like that. Yeah, we're probably a little, a little early, early for, for acquisition of us. Right. Uh, we are very much in the licensing phase of some of our technologies. Right. We're pursuing a parallel track. We can either, we can develop our own therapeutics, which we're yeah. doing. We can outlicense major parts of our technology right. to many, many, many partners. But there's going to become a day where we'll be very attractive yeah. to purchase as well. And look, we know you're accepted into Johnson & Johnson Innovation. Um, that was a big deal too, right? So as you're getting hooked up with some of these big names in addition to your own trials that, Correct. as you said, you feel like you have enough to get that approval yeah. for next year. So that's big news there. Um, you know, where do we stand on the capital raise, the money that needs to be, I mean, you're gonna, you've got a lot of new money coming public. Where does that money go to? And do you think you'll need more capital in the years ahead? We believe that with the out licensing opportunities and the PRV, uh, we have enough uh, capital to get through mid next year. Mm -hmm. um, so we have opportunities to su supplant the company's revenue or funding with those yeah. out licensing opportunities. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but frankly, that's why we went IPO, and I really encourage small companies to go IPO because we've gotten a lot more attention around our technologies. That oh, they, I'm sure. That they deserve. I'm sure. Um, and as you noted, a lot of folks, um, the canine part of this too could be a whole other section of licensing. And it's, it goes undiagnosed because there's no real treatment, you were saying. Correct. And the bigger um, the dog, the more likely that they have osteosarcoma. Yeah. So that's another um, road for you. And I'm very glad to hear about your daughter's friend uh, on the board. I love a beautiful well, healthy story like that, um, having had osteosarcoma herself. All good news, Paul. Until uh, the closing bell, well, we will watch you, your family, Thanks. your colleagues uh, ringing the closing Thank bell you. here at the New York Stock Exchange. Thanks for being with us Thanks. today. Paul Ramos, CEO at OS Therapy.